Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the reproduction of a medieval iron crossbow bolt head. The originals were found at Shrewsbury Castle in 2019 by Dr Morn Kappa and her team. The heads came up in 12th and 13th century pottery layers and when you place this date alongside the size and weight of the heads, they're more likely to be crossbow bolt heads than arrowheads. Arrowheads of this size have been found, but usually over a hundred years later, such as the Cressy head and they tend to be more rounded and diamond in section, as can be seen here. So what we'll do is look at the way these heads are forged, and as I'm making the first one, I'll walk you through what I'm doing, and for the second head, I'll make it at full speed, so you can see how quickly they can be made. Just getting the fire hot. And then we'll start on the socket end of the arrowhead. Really important with iron to work it really hot. Not so important with marred steel, but iron will split on you if it isn't hot enough. The lower quality the iron, the more it will split open. So we'll get this nice and hot and then come over to the anvil and start opening up and flattening out that socket part. Spreading it as wide as we can trying to keep the shape even. Nice clear shoulders there. And there's the first part done. Next thing to do is to draw out the corners of that socket shape so that when you roll them up, overlap them, you're not left with a, an unsightly open V at the end of the socket. Here I'll draw those corners towards me and push them away from me, pushing material into the corner of the socket itself. And there we go, nice flat end, sharp corners. And now we can begin to roll up that socket and we'll use the cutting table for that and the cross pin of a hammer. So nice and hot. Bring it into the cutting table. Start the bend with the cross pin of the hammer and then begin to roll it up. You see I'm being quite gentle with the hammer at this point because it's very thin. With, again with steel it wouldn't matter too much. You can do all of that in one go in one heat but with iron you've got to be really careful not to open up a split as you bend that socket around. So back into the fire for a second heat. And now we can bring it over to the anvil, we can start rolling it right up, overlapping each side of the socket. And you'll see that I'm rolling the bar as I go, working with the flat of the hammer to close up the gap. And overlap the end of that socket. I'm not working the end at all where it will fit into the shaft, I'm just working on the neck area where that really bright yellow heat is. You could leave it there, you could have it closed up, it would work fine, but to make it nice and tidy and to look like the original, we're going to neck that now on the beak of the anvil. This needs a good heat, otherwise you can force it open or bend the head where that transition is. So a good hot heat over the beak, and then again rolling it as I work neck in that transition area between the end of the socket and the start of the point. And then back onto the corner of the anvil, flat of the hammer again on the socket itself at an angle. And there's that socket pretty much finished up. And I'll just pop that on the mandrel now to round everything up, get it true always working in the direction of the socket itself to keep it from unra unravelling. And there we go, that's that socket done. So the next job is to cut the point off now. And again, you want that pretty hot to do that. Too 
hit to her face. Rolling over as you go until there's enough of a cut through each side to be able to break that off with a pair of tongs. You don't need much material beyond the point of that neck. You draw out a surprising amount when you, when you bring that point out. held across your body and the hammer pulling that point down working on the the near edge of the anvil so the hammer can fall off the, the face of the anvil as you draw that point out working all four sides evenly and then just tidying up the transition area making sure that it tapers nicely from the neck up to the, the widest part of the head. Everything nice and even and square. And there we are, we're done. With a late medieval English head, that would then be forged down into a diamond section rather than being left square. But the original is a heavy crossbow bolt head, so we leave it square. Okay, so this time we're going to go full speed with no commentary, just so that you can see how quickly they can actually be forged. 